Hey guys, what's up? So, if you didn't see my uh, Flick of the Week video that I put out a couple days back, then you might not know this, but I broke, I thought I broke my toe at the time. I went to the do a different doctor and they told me I, actually, I had actually broken my foot. So now, I'm in a cast. I can't walk, I have to ride a fucking knee scooter around. Um, which, I mean, I'm not complaining, it's it's actually kind of fun, but uh, I can't go up and down stairs like I used to, so me making videos looks like it's not going to be super common, but I kind of forced myself to come up here just to make this one video because I felt like I needed to review this movie after watching it myself. So, tonight's movie is an Australian zombie comedy Action horror film from 2015 and tonight's movie is Wormwood Road of the Dead now this movie came out on Blu-ray and DVD um, a, almost a month ago and I actually pre-ordered it and turns out that I pre-ordered it with a couple other things and it turns out that a couple other things that I pre-ordered one of them doesn't come out until the 15th of next month so I have to wait until the 20th of next month I have to wait a whole other month to get my copy of it but I'm but I already ordered it I saw it was on Netflix and I'd seen it was on Netflix a few times and I figured, you know what, I may as well watch it before I before the money comes out of my account for it and before it's even shipped. So that way, if I don't like it, I can just take it off my order and then save myself like seven or eight bucks. So I watched it on Netflix. And, uh, yeah, the plot has to do with, it, it's set in Australia, alright? And... The movie has to, is, is a zombie movie, obviously. But it's a kind of meshed combination of Mad Max and, like, Dawn of the Dead, um, with a little bit of, like, I don't know what else to throw in. It's It's got a lot of really cool elements to it. Um, but when I first read that it was, that someone said it was, like, Dawn of the Dead and Mad Max combined, I thought it would be, like, full-on Road Warrior. It's more like actual, the original Mad Max, with the main character being kind of a family man, and then something happens to him and his family, and then yada yada yada, eventually gets to the point that he's like, uh, like some kind of, you know, guy in like crazy fucking 1970s and 80s over the top, uh, post-apocalyptic, like, you know, like battle armor and armored cars and stuff. But, um, it has to do with a, a couple characters, two characters actually. Um, our main character, whose name I can't remember for the life of me, I believe it was Barry, um, and his sister, Brooke. Now, uh, it follows both of them as they go through their own story, uh, you know, and it cuts back and forth between them, but basically, Brooke ends up getting kidnapped by a mad scientist, and during, dur like, right when the zombie apocalypse starts, uh, because she's actually immune to the virus, and, uh, as it turns out, he, uh, her brother is also immune to the virus, and he is out to trying to find her and save her from zombies. He doesn't know she had been kidnapped by uh, a mad scientist. Now, that already sounds pretty cool. Now, throw in a bunch of really cool kind of like, you know, uh, 80s, like, zombie B-movie kind of goofy characters. Throw in a bunch of that. Throw in, throw in some sight gags, a few references here and there ton of gore and just really likable interesting and entertaining characters and you have a pretty damn good movie and it's also for a zombie movie it's also very very original because I don't think I've ever seen a zombie movie where it kind of well I mean where, where they kind of went like to the, where they kind of took it to like Mad Max levels of armoring a car and I know they did that in like Dawn of the Dead and I know they did that in like Land of the Dead and a few other movies but they never like that was never like one of the main focuses of the story um because one of the main focuses is them like armoring up and going out to find his sister and that's 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 basically like the really cool thing about it is all the armoring up and all the weapons and stuff they get and um yeah but it's a, it's a pretty original film um and the reason some people are immune is actually because the this virus, which is airborne, is you can only be infected with it if your blood type is A negative. And uh, 
I don't know how common a negative blood type is. I'm sure it's not super common, considering the number of zombies compared to the number of survivors. But uh, if you have a negative blood, you are not going to be infected, and that is also a really, really, really cool situation, really cool kind of idea. Like, you can't be infected airborne, but you can still be bitten and infected, though. But still, I've never seen a movie um, really do that, other than, like, World War Z, which that was, like, with diseases, and that was a pretty stupid movie anyway. Um, uh, what, what should I talk about? Um, maybe I should talk about some of the references that are made in this film. Well, there's a suiting up reference. There's a, there's a scene where they suit up in armor and, like, get their stuff together, and it was, is very reminiscent of Evil Dead. Of in Evil Dead 2, when uh, Ash is putting on all, like getting his stuff together, and he just and they just like groovy. Sadly, nobody said groovy or anything, or gave a cool one-liner. But whatever, there are enough cool one-liners, and there's enough, you know, kind of fun, like just really fun zombie movie jokes and dialogue. Like there's a point in the movie where I remembered the the line from the uh, zombie comedy classic Shaun of the Dead where he where where one character says, "Who died and made you the fucking king of the zombies?" And there are a few moments, there there's like one or two moments where I m r remembered that because it's it, I don't think it was a like a reference on purpose because it was just kind of, it reminded me of it, not it was a full-on reference. Um, there's a reference to the Road Warrior, which I didn't expect. There's actually a scene where a character uses a sharpened metal boomerang, and that is amazing because that was uh, one of the things in the Road Warrior that I remember. It's been years since I've seen the Road Warrior, though. Um, so... Uh, I guess I should start talking about the merits of the film uh, from a technical, from a more pro like professional standpoint. But the acting in the film, the acting is all around pretty decent. It's not you know award worthy, but it's not terrible. Believe me, I've seen far far worse for independent and zombie films that took four years to make. Um, the writing is here is really really funny. Uh, you know, it's it's the kind of B movie dialogue that doesn't have to be smart to be funny. It just has to be a little bit clever and entertaining to be funny, and that's what the dialogue in this film was. So I'm very happy to see that. Um, characters, uh, like I said before, all the characters are very you know kind of B movie characters, very silly, goofy, likable. Um, there are a few moments where it does get a bit serious at times, and yeah, it does pull at the heartstrings. Uh, um, effects. From an effects standpoint, this movie is top notch when it comes to like practical effects, gore, blood, all that. It really, really, uh, uh, you know, comes together well. Although I do have a bit of a problem. There is a, a quite a bit of CG blood in this movie, and it doesn't look very good. Now, it could just be for style, for for like a kind of stylized sake, and. And, I mean, I guess I could see why they would do that for style, because the film definitely has a very, kind of like, um, very dark kind of visual style, kind of almost comic book-like visual style. And I'm sure that they were trying to go for something like in the original Dawn of the Dead, how the blood looks like red paint, because that's how Romero, he wanted it to look like a comic book. It's, it, it it just all together really works. Um, I mean, the CG blood isn't too good, as I said before, and but it's not super frequent. And when they use it, it's uh, pretty you know quick you know cutaways and stuff like that. So I can honestly forgive the film completely for it. Understand? And I understand that this movie took four years to make, and they were on a very low budget. So I can understand 100% completely. Um. From a technical standpoint, lighting, camera work, uh, sound mix, uh, music, um, the music here is good. There's a few, uh, like, actual songs that are, like, licensed and kind of popular, um, that are in the film that I didn't expect to be in the film. Um, the lighting is nice, the visual style is nice, the camera work is pretty good, although they kind of do, like, a gorilla style camera work. And, uh, it, it works, with, again, with the style of the film, it definitely works, but if they would have made this film, like, a lot more over-the-top and, uh, more, like, campy, it wouldn't have worked at all. 
the f it's been so long since I've reviewed something I can't even remember what I'm what I'm supposed to cover when reviewing. Uh, the pacing in the movie, pretty good. It keeps you interested all the way through. Um, I honestly didn't get bored at all during the movie. I was giggling and, you know, laughing and just enjoying the references and stuff, like, non-stop throughout the entire movie. And it's... I mean, this movie might just be one of the best zombie comedies, or just one of the best zombie films of the past, I don't know, maybe five or six years. It's really, really good, and it's actually well made and it's independent too which is also really good because this proves that the zombie genre isn't quite dead yet and even though it has been done to death in the mainstream it's still it, 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 amongst independent people amongst independent directors it can still be made originally um there are a couple things I should mention. Uh, in the movie, the zombies, there, there's a few weird things about the zombies. The zombies, they move faster at night, which the reason they give is because apparently when the zombies like showed up with this airborne virus, um, which you don't learn the origins of, which I'm completely okay with that, but when they show up with this airborne virus, um, all the gas like in the world becomes unusable. They they try to burn gasoline, ethanol, um, you know, petrol. Like they they just try to burn these different types of gases that are extremely flammable most of the time, and they don't burn. And then they suddenly, and then they accidentally learn by a guy, you know, like uh, dropping his like cigarette into a pool of blood, that the zombie's blood is flammable. The zomb zombie blood is flammable, and the zombies, you constantly see them, like, breathing, and there's, like, gas coming out of their mouth, or kind of fog or something, which does look a bit cheap, but again, budgetary restraints, I can understand. They breathe, and it's, and, 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 and it's actually, like, methane, it's actually, like, flammable, so they decide to use zombies in order to fuel their gas, which, I, in order to fuel their, their, their car, which... I'm not going to complain about because, again, it's extremely original, although it doesn't make a ton of sense. On the gore meter from 1 to 10, 1 being something like Nosferatu and 10 being something like Brain Dead. Um, Wormwood Road of the Dead is probably about a 6.5, maybe? There's a lot of blood and gore here. Um, I mean, maybe maybe a 6, maybe a 5.5, somewhere in that range between like like 6 and like 5. Somewhere in between there, it it it's it sits there. Um, I mean, if you've never you know seen again, if you've never seen anything like gory, then this might be surprising to you. But if you you know you're a veteran like I am when it comes to uh, splatter films and just gross out uh, gore films, then this film isn't gonna bother you that much. So, all in all. I absolutely love the film. I'm glad I decided to watch it um, before, you know, uh, full on deciding to buy it. It was definitely worth checking out, and I honestly think that this movie will become a cult classic here soon. And while it is not a while it is not while it is not a absolutely perfect film, it is still very entertaining and very original and I gotta praise it for that and I gotta give it a 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5 for that because I absolutely adored this movie and if you are a fan of horror comedies, if you're a fan of zombie flicks, if you think the zombie genre has all has just died and there's no good zombie films left, watch this because this is a good zombie flick and it might be the best zombie comedy since Shaun of the Dead. You can even quote me on that. So anyway guys, if you like the video, like my channel, be sure to like this video, favorite it, whatever you want, and maybe subscribe perhaps, I would really, really appreciate that, and check the links in the description below, there are links to things like my Tumblr, Twitter, all that, Facebook, all that is in the description below. Hey there kids, do you want to get cool stuff in the mail like this, or this, or even this? Well then subscribe to Horror Block today. Have you ever wanted to do cool cosplays like this? Or this? Or even this? Well, 
Now you can. Subscribe to Play Moonchild Cosplay on YouTube and you can see all her tutorials on how to do cool stuff like this. Do you want to get cool horror and exploitation film t-shirts like this? Or this? Or this? Well then go to RottenCotton.com to check out all of their premium t-shirts.